All right, so we've got to set up for our calibration here. So I've got the dial indicator set up. It's almost buried. I got a little extra travel left. So I want to go to the settings tab. Let's pick the camera up. And we're going to go up here to the settings and steps per unit, X and OK. And it asks how far do I want to move. On this one, I want to do a negative number so I don't crash the indicator. So I'm going to put you back down here. I'm using my red reaxis for a stand, and it works perfect because I can put it right up against the indicator. So how far do we want to move this? Well, let's do a half an inch to start with. So we'll do negative 0.5. All right, so we're, it went... It went 502. So, and we're reading 502, so it went 0 0.498. 0 0.498. Okay. So now, let's move it back. I'm going to go past it and then come back. Just in case we have a backlash problem. Let's go back to settings, X axis, negative 0.5. So it went to 503. So is that. Actually, it went 503 foul. So let's type in 0.503. So we have that set now. So let's move this back. Okay, we're at zero. Let's go back to settings. We'll type negative 0.5. So, 501, so we can type 501, but I think that this machine probably has some backlash, backlash issues plus the gantry moving. So we're just gonna go with it and run it one more time. See how close we're getting. Okay, go back to settings, steps per unit, point, oh, negative 0.5. Ah, so it actually didn't move quite enough, so I'm running a 0.499. So we're hovering right about the 1,000 mark. And just for kicks, we'll do it one more time. Negative 0.5. <clears throat> All right, so we're hovering back between 1,000 each way. And I'm gonna probably call that good because I'm gonna say this machine's probably not that accurate. So I'm gonna tell it 0.501. So it says 10,174 .4. <clears throat> All right, so now let's do a little testing. So I want to go and run this back. Now I'm reading half a thou here. My DRO is showing one thou. So that's pretty good. So let's go to our MDI screen. We're going to do a little G0X negative 2. Hold on. G zero X negative two. Okay. G zero X zero. Hey, two inches. We got one thou. 
So let's zero that. <clears throat> We're at a half a thou. Let's do four inches. G zero X negative four. G zero X zero. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna call that calibrated. Now, <clears throat> if your lead screws are the same pitch on the X, Y, and Z, and you run the same stuff for motors, technically you can copy the settings from your X to all the other steppers and then do your calibration. That way you won't be so far off. I don't recommend just copying the settings and, and running the machine but I do recommend copying the settings from X over to Y and Z so that you can do calibration. So next step would be to move the dial indicator here, do the other axis, and here, and do the Z axis. We're not gonna go over that in this video. I'm just gonna say that this part of it's done. So there you go. Now the X axis is calibrated. So I've got my rotary axis, and we're gonna do the X axis. So, on the menu up here, we're going to we'll do ports and pins. So you want to make sure that your Z your A axis is enabled with the appropriate step and direction pins. I've already got mine working, so you do whatever you have to do to make yours work. Then we want to go to motor tuning and just kind of see what we have here. Uh, this will be adjusted in the calibration. And let's turn the acceleration up just a little bit. <clears throat> just to kind of get us going. Save settings, hit OK. And let's see what we have. I've set the hot keys for plus and minus on the menu. We go to hot keys right there. And you can set your A, once you click this, to your plus and minus. Okay? So now, if I hit plus, it's a little slow there. Okay? So we're pretty good there. So we're back to our zero. So what I'm going to do is use this little angle finder and set it on here. We're going to command it to turn a certain amount of degrees to try to get our steps. So I'm going to turn it on. Okay, and we'll zero that. So now this is zeroed to this plate. So we're going to go up here to settings. Steps per unit. A axis. Hit OK. This is degrees. So let's do 45 degrees. Hit OK. And enter. Okay, so we'll put our gauge up here. And we moved 18 and a half degrees. So it wants to know how far did we move? 18.5. Okay. So now, let's go back and move this back to the zero position. There we go. So now let's rerun our test here. So we'll come up to settings. Sets per A, 45 degrees. Hit okay. And let's see what we have. 44.25. So we're pretty close. So we can do this a few times to see if we get this dead on. <clears throat> and what I've actually done before is, uh, let me enter 44.25 in the screen. Now, if you get a motor tuning, Our A axis 12.369. I know from the other uh, experience I ended up at 12.5. So let me enter that and save it. Hit OK. 
So now what I want to do is move this back to our zero position like that zero let's go back to our settings sets for unit A now this time let's do 180 okay and enter we'll put our gauge on there we're a half a degree off and this surface is kind of rough so it might be actually it might be right on the money so let's just tell it that it went 180 and let's rerun that at 360 when this back around Okay, so we should be at zero. Let me zero that. Now let's do 360. Settings. Eight. 360. Go. And. Zero. There we go. Our A axis is calibrated. All right, so we've done the rotary calibration, we've done the X axis, I've done the Y and Z off camera. We still have the zero set up on our indicator here. And to show you after the four inch move, the DRO is still reading zero. So you can do this as many times as you want to just see to make sure you dial your machine in as much as you can. But just remember, there's a lot of variables. There's backlash, there's, you know, the, the chassis moves. I can put this indicator up here and I can pull back and forth and you'll get a reading. That's how bad the 6040 machine is for moving around. The reason being is the 6040 has these rails and there's nothing to support this from moving this way same way here you have these rails here and there's nothing to keep these rails from bending these are like 12 millimeter rails and i think these are 16s but they just don't do the trick to keep the machine rigid so as long as you don't push the machine too hard like i said with the aluminum eighth of an inch is probably the max um there's a reason they usually come with that ER11 collet because you really don't need to be cutting anything larger than an eighth inch. You can do three sixteenths with real light cuts, but then you get into tool wear because you're rubbing. So I would say stick with an eighth inch bit with aluminum. You can do a quarter inch bit with plastic and wood. But uh, really what you need to do is upgrade the gantry on the 6040 machine. I'm gonna probably be showing a video on upgrading this machine but the trick is people are putting a piece of aluminum across the back plate and they're getting rid of these rails and they're putting a supported rail this is a supported rail the back is supported here and that's what you need on this machine to make it rigid so don't get too tied up into the one thou here or there one thou on this machine is plenty accurate because you got so much moving on the machine so anyway thanks for hanging out listening to me gab a little bit uh hope you learned something about the calibration on the axes if you have any questions put them in the comments below and i'll be glad to answer them if you have any comments on something i did wrong or something that i could have saved some time on hey leave those down too other people can read those and learn from them as well anyhow thanks for watching